orbital filling diagrams. Hund's rules for the ground state. This presentation has two parts. Creating an orbital diagram and using Hund's rules to fill an orbital filling diagram for the ground state of an atom. To create an orbital diagram to fill with electrons, we need to start with the subshell filling order, which is and we need to remember the number of orbitals each type of subshell has. S-type subshells have one orbital, P-type have three, D-type have five, and F-type have seven. Next, we start with the lowest energy subshell, the 1s, and place the label and a circle for each of the orbitals in the subshell. In this case, there is one orbital, so we draw one circle. The next lowest energy subshell is the 2s, which also has only one orbital, so one circle. Then the 2p subshell, which has three orbitals and therefore three circles. The 3s and the 3p come next, and then the 4s. Next in the order is the 3d, which has five orbitals and five circles. Then the 4p. 5s, 4d, and 5p come next, then the 6s, 4f with seven orbitals, 5d, and 6p. Finally, the 7s, 5f, 6d, and 7p. And this provides us with enough orbitals to do the ground state configuration for every element in the periodic table. It is not necessary to draw all of these subshells if they are not going to be used. Draw only as many as you know you need. This will depend, of course, on how many electrons you need to place in the diagram, which depends on what the element is. Let's begin by doing the orbital filling diagram for nitrogen, which has seven electrons. Once we have created the diagram, we need to place the electrons in the diagram. Hans rules tell us how to do this. Hans rules are rules for placing electrons to create the ground state, that is the lowest energy arrangement of electrons of the element. One, electrons fill the lowest energy orbitals first. This means we put the first electron in the lowest energy orbital, the 1s. We indicate the presence of an electron by a diagonal line in the circle of the orbital. This diagonal line indicates the spin of the electron. It does not matter whether you draw it tilting to the right or to the left. There is room for a second electron in the 1s orbital because each orbital can hold two electrons. This second electron is a second diagonal line drawn the other way to indicate the opposite spin. The third electron goes in the 2s orbital and the fourth as well with the opposite spin. The fifth electron goes in the 2p subshell and you can put it in any of the orbitals because they are equivalent. The question comes then with the sixth electron. Where does it go? It could go in the same orbital as the fifth electron or in one of the other two. Because electrons repel each other, they do not want to be in the same orbital, which is the same space. So when we have degenerate orbitals, 
the electrons will spread out as much as possible in the orbitals to get as far away from each other as possible. We still have a question, however. The sixth electron clearly goes in one of the two empty orbitals in the 2p subshell, which circle does not matter. But does it have the same spin as the first electron, or the opposite spin? That is, we could have the sixth electron with the same spin, like this, or with the opposite spin, like this, which is lower in energy. It is not immediately obvious, but experimental work confirms that the lowest energy state is the one in which the electrons have the same spin. So the electrons are spread out and given the same spin like this. So nitrogen's seven electrons are arranged this way. Two in the 1s orbital with opposite spins, two in the 2s orbital with opposite spins, and one in each of the three 2p orbitals with the same spin. Now let's do another example. Let's do the orbital diagram for iron, symbol Fe. Iron has 26 electrons and is in the fourth row of the periodic table. We need to place 26 electrons into the diagram using Hund's rules. So here we go. One, two, fills the 1s. 3, 4, fills the 2s, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, fills the 2p. Even though we know the 2p subshell will be filled, it's a good habit to place one electron in each orbital before pairing the electrons. 11, 12, fills the 3s, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, fills the 3p, 19, 20, fills the 4s, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, puts one electron in each of the 3d orbitals, and 26 pairs up electrons in one orbital, which one does not matter. And that completes the orbital filling diagram for iron.